Hey family, welcome back to Chasing Jesus. Um, We are so excited that you're doing life with us, that you're here and just on this journey of Chasing Jesus with us. Um, If you caught the video last week, we talked about reading scripture and how that's one of the the spiritual practices or spiritual disciplines, whichever you want to call them. Um, But honestly, we kind of got to the end of that video and we were like, there's so much more that we could dig into. So we just wanted to welcome welcome you back to the conversation. Honestly, all of these practices are things that we could dig into week after week after week. There's so much to unravel, um, but we just kind of wanted to continue the conversation and talk about ways that you can really dig into scripture and how that has been a a life-changing thing for both of us. Yep. So this is episode two. Yeah. Chasing Jesus. Hey. Hey. Welcome back. Welcome back. Haven't seen you in a week. <laughs> on I'm the just, video. <laughs> right. I'm just thankful well, we are wearing the same shirts. But I was just thinking about the fact that you and I so frequently just switch shirts. Like mm. we are forever and always either wearing fam shirts or now greater life shirts. Yep. So that's a thing. It's just what we do. Yeah, it is. Um, so we were talking about steps for new believers. Yeah. And we didn't even get to wrap that up no. just because we try to keep ours to 30 minute. Um, mom and busy dad life attention spans. Yeah, which is thirty minutes at yeah. max. <laughs> and so we uh, we're gonna s- jump right in with this and, and yeah. go into. Um, so so I asked you the question: How does a new believer get right. started? Where in scripture? Where in scripture? Yeah. And so we started in the Gospels, uh, Mark, Ephesians, and then basically any of Paul's letters, go into James. Um, in Psalms, Psalms, and Proverbs has really yep. practical wisdom. Yeah. So that's kind of a quick recap for those of you that yeah. are catching up. Yeah. One thing I would not recommend doing, I mean, not that it's a bad thing to do, but I've heard a lot of people who are like, I just play Bible roulette, you know, like I just open the book and wherever it falls, that's where I'll read. And I'm like, well, that's cool. But you like say that you opened a Song of Solomon's and so- Song of Solomon and you're like, whoa, this got explicit really fast, yeah. you know? Um, so I don't know. I think just more intentional reading is helpful Mm -hmm. um I do kind of jump around maybe that's one of the things we can talk about is like as people who have read through scripture before so maybe this is somebody was raised in the church so they're familiar with like you know different parts of the bible what does your reading habit look like right now well right now I'm I'm like I said last episode I'm in this season of saturating myself in just a lot of scripture Mm -hmm. so just unloading the scripture onto myself. A, Reading a lot as of much. It. Yeah. It's like, it's a quantity, yeah. like large amounts of yeah. scripture. So, but for me, large amounts of scripture, having six kids looks like six different chapters and, and about four or five different books of the Bible. Mm-hmm. So I start my morning off with solitude and, and, and the secret place time. And in that time, typically I, I pray a Psalm to myself and over myself and my family and then but reading the actual scripture i'm in second kings um psalms like i said Mm -hmm. um isaiah and i just or i'm finishing up micah and then i just finished the new testament and so i read three in second kings and one in isaiah and one in micah Mm. and i was uh in the book of revelation like four days ago and yeah i read one through through that so when i get done with it my typical i guess if i was if i was going to give somebody something to start a habit with yeah like a template yeah it would be read three chapters yeah just like in and for me um i would start in matthew and i would just read straight through yeah because it by the time you get through john you've read enough about jesus where you're starting to grasp who this man was um and then you can go into acts and what what this man caused yeah and what this man left as a legacy which is us and then after that you're going into romans which goes into um this is throughout history what happened to us yeah and how god has redeemed us and set us apart and then you start going into paul's letters which tells us as believers now how to operate between us in the world and us and each other yeah as well as us in our personal life and then you get into other things like um, after Paul's letters you'll go into um, 
the things like Hebrews, which we don't necessarily know who it was, but it might have been Paul, but we don't know who it is. Yeah. And then uh, Peter and James and ultimately wrap it all up with what's going to happen in the end in Revelation. Yeah. And good luck figuring that one out. Yeah. So yeah. I believe the New Testament is laid out um, intentionally um, with with the manner by which it's laid out. I don't believe it's like randomly thrown together. Let's put Paul's, we'll just throw Paul's letters in here and where, where do we throw Peter's letters? You know, I think mm-hmm. they were intentionally designed by Holy Spirit to, to, um, to help yeah. guide us. So yeah. I, I would suggest that. I think that it's also important to, um, to read like scripture together, you know, we were talking about like playing Bible roulette and maybe a reason to not do that is because you miss some of the context. Oh yeah. Um, and so it's, I think that it's really helpful to like, read the entire book we were talking about how last um, episode how actually it's not a book it's a library of Mm -hmm. books Um, but they all kind of work together they're all pointing to Jesus they're all like laying out who Jesus was God Jesus was the word made flesh Um, but I think it's important to read like bulk portions of scripture together or to stay like in one book that way you're not like "Uh, today I think I'm going to read James chapter 1 and tomorrow I'm going to read Proverbs 28 and um, it's just kind of random and scattered and I have found, I don't know if you have, but I have found anytime somebody talks about those that Bible rouletteing that you're mm-hmm. talking about, they don't read the whole book Yeah, that they turn to. They read that chapter. Yeah, and, and then you're missing... Maybe even the couple verses. Yeah, you're just missing a lot of context. Yeah. And there are some really great tools even... I, even after reading through scripture um, several times, a lot of the times when I start a new book, I'll actually go to YouTube and I'll pull up Bible Project um, that gives kind of like a synopsis. Um, it's really great, these links. And we'll, we'll link that in the description mm-hmm. below. But there are basically the Bible Project um, animated and kind of lays out this summary of what the book is. And these yeah. videos are anywhere from like five to ten minutes long. Mm-hmm. Um, but it basically is kind of laying out context and what was the surrounding events of the world what who was the audience that was being written to and so it's just a good way to kind of know um have a mindset to frame the reading around that way it's not just kind of cherry picking i think that's one reason that a lot of people get like turned off by christians because it's like we just pick out this random verse that we like and we're like i'm going to champion this verse and it's like yeah but what was the context what was the surrounding events um Great example is Philippians 4.13. You know, mm-hmm. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And we're like, that sounds great for sports. Mm-hmm. Like, I can win this basketball game through Christ who gives me strength. And it's like, actually, Paul was talking about contentment and how he had learned to be content yeah. with a lot. And he had been content with little. And he had learned that he could really live in whatever situation because of the strength of Christ inside of him. So um, I think context is important. And, and just using different tools kind of to understand Scripture and and what exactly it means exactly and then uh practically when reading scripture uh, we talked last episode about developing what the world will call a habit yeah um but what we would call the the um the framework of faithfulness um to develop faithfulness i would tell you to to try your absolute best to read the bible at the same time every day yeah not read it at 6 a.m but I read mine in the morning. Yeah, before with your my morning kids coffee. Get up, if I can help it. And yeah, yeah, it, and it doesn't have to be morning. That's what works well for us. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think some people are like, you know what? The morning is a mad dash for me, so I read it on my lunch break at work, and I know yeah. that I can be consistent. It, it is just easier to form healthy habits if you are doing like the same time of day, mm-hmm. the same setting. You're just kind of setting yourself up for success that way. Well, not only that, you know, we talk about morning versus midday versus at evening um some some people may find it if if they're going through a process of reading a lot of scripture they'll read multiple times a day and if that's use a, if that's something like that, that you're really drawn to i would suggest doing it the more that you can inject scripture and, and mm-hmm. the word of god into your life the 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 better it is for you it's not necessarily better for 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 the lord it is better for you um but if we were to engage uh, in a conversation of what's better morning versus night, I think a lot of times, and I'm going to be a bit candid and blunt on this one, but I, I believe a lot of times people say, I like to do it at nighttime as a scapegoat so that I don't get up early and, and do that. And I understand I'm not condemning someone that has, 
you know the the five six kids who who really just suff- suffers during the during the nighttime they can't sleep as well but there is something spiritually wonderful about starting your day yeah. off with the lord yeah and and i would never condemn somebody that's struggling with that with reading um in the morning time but i would challenge you yeah. in it and say if you're reading at nighttime to to kind of squeeze it in mm-hmm. at the end of your day you're missing it all yeah because script scripture is is how we learn the plumb line of how we live life yeah so everything the way we live life should revolve around um it's basically your schedule should revolve around when to do scripture yeah not scripture revolve or, or scripture revolves around you well it's a matter of priorities too you know and and even more so than scripture it's it's jesus like mm. our schedule and our lives should be built around jesus and the mm. things of god not the other way around and uh, i was like that for the longest time because i didn't want to get up early in the morning mm. and i had all the justification and all the reasons um but you know it's kind of just like we're giving the leftover crumbs of our day to God. You know, it's like what energy I have left, God, I'll give that to you at the end of the day um, versus like giving him the, the first fruits, the the tithe of our day or the beginning of our day. Um, and you're right. There is no condemnation. However, and you're usually the one that will make like statements that are a little bit more like, um, ouch, you know, I'm, I usually sit back and I'm like, okay, I'm glad you said that. But I read something recently that said like, when, when you say I don't have time for something, essentially what you're saying is that's not a priority, Correct. you know? And so like you will make time for what's a priority to you. Yeah. Um, and I think about our relationship, like if, if I didn't see you all day long and then like right before I'm going to sleep, you came in and you're like, Hey, I'm home. Just wanted to say, I love you. And I'm glad we got to spend these five minutes together. If that was our relationship, relationship every single day our marriage would suffer yeah it would um and i think in the same way relation our relationship with god suffers when we we do our entire day and we live our life and then at the end of the day we're like we'll throw up these here you go jesus yeah. here i read my chapter i'm good i can go to bed now and check that off the box yeah you know if you recall last episode we talked about um like writing it on your hand and mm-hmm. building up these mo- monuments of memory because uh, in, in Old Testament, that's what the Lord told Moses to tell the Israelites is to set up these monuments, these these pillars to remind you and your generations of what I've done. Yeah. So God knows that we're we're a people who don't remember well. Yeah. And and that's not just me yeah. who I've I've prayed and I've talked to you and I've I I've struggled with memory. Yeah. Um that's for all people. Yeah. No one has the capacity to, to remember everything well. Mm-hmm. Well, if you put it off to the last minute, you're dealing with tired. You're dealing with uh, emotionally drained. Yeah. And, but All the some, baggage of the day. Yeah. There's God built in us when we wake up. We get a fresh start. Yeah. He built it in us. It actually says in Scripture, it's funny we're talking about that, but not really. <laughs> he says in Scripture that his mercies are new every morning. Yeah. What he's basically saying is, I have given you a reset switch every every morning you wake up. Morning. Yeah. So if you if you're exhausted, you come in, you've worked your 12, 14 hours, your double shift, whatever you had to do as a single mom just to make it through. Yeah. And then you try to collapse on the bed, and I'm just going to read a, a chapter. That's good, but how how many of us fall asleep when reading? Yeah, like there's there's so much involved in this. That's why I would just tell, just read in the morning. Just try, and yeah. it doesn't have to be extravagant. Ten yeah, ten minutes. Ten, ten minutes. Um, I think it also it's like speaking from experience as a mom. Um, it sets the tone for the day. Like there there was a, a long season where. I waited and woke up like 10 minutes before the kids were going to wake up. And so I'm like brushing my teeth and getting ready as quick as I can, going and waking the kids up. And then the house is already stirring. And there's like this um, chaos of getting ready for school and can't find shoes. Did you brush your teeth? You know, and and the day started chaotic Mm -hmm. and hectic. And it has absolutely been worth it for me to wake up 
an hour, an hour and a half earlier than the kids and to sit in the quiet, to spend time in the secret place and to read scripture because I'm, I'm essentially like filling myself up mm-hmm. so that then when my kids wake up, I've, I've done what I need to spiritually to charge myself. Yeah. And then when they wake up and they've had a bad dream or they didn't sleep good or they can't find their shoes, they're cranky, um, they're cranky whatever. I'm, I am peace, Mm -hmm. you know, like I have peace because I've been spending time with the father versus I also am in a mad dash and we're all snapping at each other. And then Mm -hmm. I'm sending them to school and I have mom guilt because I just yelled at my kids and now they're at school for six hours. And so, um, I would really just challenge you like school is getting ready to start back um, where we are. Just try it, you know, like like Taylor was saying, 10 minutes, 10 minutes earlier, set the alarm back. And, and I'm willing to bet that if you'll try that and make it a habit and be faithful in it, you'll find that that's not even enough time. You'll want 20 minutes Mm -hmm. and then you'll want 30 minutes and then you'll want one hour. And it, and it truly is one of those habits that it starts paying off. And now you're like, okay, I actually want to do this. This is not a, I have to, it's a, I get to. Yeah. And so like we, we talk about the times like daily, get into the word. Let, let him become your reset switch. Pour, pour as much of him as you can into you um, and, and start to store this away. Because what's, what's so beautiful about this is if you are born again, if you are, um, have been saved and, and are a follower of Jesus, this is already stored inside of you through mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit. We have the spirit of the word of God that dwells inside of us. And so this part is just storing it here. Yeah. And in in our emotions to separate us so that we become less us yeah. and become more him. But I would actually tell you if 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 I would lay this out for a new believer it would be you know start in the gospels you said Mark I would say Matthew it doesn't matter it's really it's kind of the same stuff. Um do it in the morning. And try try to read a little bit. I I challenge people to read more than a chapter. Yeah. Because um, reading a chapter can can easily turn into a cop out and yeah. a check the box. When this is supposed to transform you while you read it. Yeah. Not not just check the box to accommodate your day, but the Bible the should be read um, with the intention to receive what God has for you that day. Yeah. And so like. Read it practically, um, read it spiritually, and and read it um, historically. This is practically this is how it impacts your life. Mm-hmm. Spiritually, this is um, how we live life. We no longer consign to flesh feelings, our own thoughts. Even yeah. we consign to um, the spirit of, of God. We, did, we consign to the Word of God. We consign to truth, and we get that. We keep coming back to that word truth because. Uh, in Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So we're consigning to Jesus the logos, the mm-hmm. written word of God. All that is tied together to be scripture. We're we're consigned to truth now, not not to our own thoughts or emotions. And then we have to read it understanding that this actually happened. Yeah. This is a historical document. It is the most accurate document. And no matter how much it's challenged, no matter how much people will dive into researching it to try to disprove it, you can't. It can't Mm-mm. be done. No, I think, too, I would advise people, you know, we talked about mostly New Testament books, but it is important to also stay in the Old Testament um, because so much of the New Testament talks about, like, the fulfillment of the law, which is Old Testament. And so um, I got into this habit of, like, I only wanted to read New Testament because it's what felt better to me, Mm -hmm. and I understood it easier, and it seemed more like practical application. But I do think it's important to have both. And so typically my reading is I'm I'm reading a couple chapters in New and a couple chapters in old and I would encourage others to do that um I will say I I think that so many people have a misconception of of following Jesus and they're like well Christians it's it's all about like what you can't do and we look at this like behavior modification like I've got to try really hard not to sin and here's the list of things that I can't do if I follow Jesus but I would actually say that you know that's kind of where the church has missed it I I wish the focus would have been more on what you should be doing um, like as as far as the spiritual disciplines the practices that we're talking about because if 
if you are in the Word of God, if you are consistently reading Scripture, it does transform you. Um, you know, there's Scripture that says, I've hidden your Word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Yeah. So the more that I read Scripture, the more that I'm being transformed into the likeness, the image of God, the more I want to please my Father because I know His nature is good and kind and loving. Mm-hmm. And then it's not a, I'm trying really hard and white knuckling, trying to avoid sin. It's actually just like I, I'm chasing Jesus as hard as I can. I don't have time yeah. for for sin that hinders or, or so easily entangles me. Yeah. And so it's actually instead of focusing on the things that we shouldn't be doing, we're focusing on the things that we should be doing. Mm-hmm. And, and as you read throughout, you know, Paul's letters and the life of Jesus, and you're like, okay, this is who I'm modeling my life after. Now I'm looking at, okay, I was called to to heal the sick and raise the dead and cleanse the lepers and cast out demons. I'm I'm called to live a life that's worthy of the call. I'm, I'm called to love, to, to, to be in unity with brothers and sisters in Christ. And it's all these things that I need to aim to do versus Mm. here's the list of all the things that I shouldn't be doing. Um, So it's just, it's very life giving. I think that's so powerful. And when we, when we walk out the Lord, he, he actually says, if you love me, you'll keep my commands. Yeah. And, and we, we only have two from Jesus, Yeah. which are love the Lord, your God and love others. Yeah. And then as Jesus is leaving, he gives out one more and it's go. Yeah. Go, go, share, share my gospel. Yeah. Tell, tell others about me. Yeah. And, um, man, so to to read scripture is to deposit all of that inside of us. Right. And to to grow in what that actually means. Yeah. That's so good. It is. So I think that that's our our biggest encouragement. I think that we probably will even start to do some videos and dive into scripture. Um, There are so many tools that we could unpack. I mean, we didn't even really go into that, but like the Bible Engagement Project, YouVersion has tons of devotions and Bible reading plans. If you want to try reading the Bible chronologically or however you want to do it, um, find a good uh, commentary there are hundreds yeah. of them out there we like the enduring word app it's, it's a free. yeah it's free it's an app that you can download on your phone and it just kind of goes deeper into scripture so i still use that you know I'll, I'll be reading something and i'm like god i don't even understand what is this talking about you don't put old wine or new wine and old wine skins what does that mm-hmm. mean so i'll pull it up on the commentary and just get a little bit more insight to it so um you know we we live in a society where like information is power right and it's all about like like, how do you get more yeah. information as fast as possible? Um, sometimes that's not such a good thing. Um, but for those of us who are really trying to study Scripture and chase Jesus, use the tools that are out there. Mm-hmm. There are so many good ones that can help you in your walk with Him, especially as you're studying Scripture. Yeah, and so scri- Scripture is a, was written from an Eastern context. It's, it's written from an Eastern um, way of thinking and a way of life. Yeah. And a, a lot of that context is we don't understand as, as Westerners, as Americans. Yeah. Um, but I would actually suggest to you the, the last thing is to get in community with people over Scripture. Yeah. And Jordan and I started a house church um, three, three years ago, three and a half years ago. Mm-hmm. And all we did was read a little bit and then let Holy Spirit talk about it. Yeah. Read a little bit and let Holy Spirit talk about it. And people would talk around the room about what they felt like that means to them. And it would start to develop and grow in people um, this desire for, for yeah. the Scripture, this desire to know Jesus more. So um, I would challenge anybody that's listening to this that has that desire to do communi- to do Jesus with people to start your own church. Start yeah. your own house church, your own uh, Bible study, your own home, your own coffee shop church. You know, yeah. ultimately, church is just the gathering of the people. Yeah. So, so start find that. one, find one person. And, you know, and yeah. read scripture with them. Yeah. And go Me- through Ephesians and just read a little bit of one chapter because it's typically right about an hour, an hour and a half. If you're just taking your time, reading through small chunks of it, and then. T- discussing it as you're going, you'll find that it's right around an hour. 
Yeah. If you do it right. It, it's also powerful just reading scripture out loud. You know, the word says that yeah. um, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So there's something powerful just about reading scripture out loud. Mm-hmm. Um, when I got to Revelation um, a month or two ago, I, every morning, even sitting at the dining room table by myself, it talks about like um, reading it out loud. And so I would do that. You've you've really gotten in the habit lately of reading Psalms mm-hmm. out loud. Um, and so do that with a friend. Um, like, like you said, it doesn't have to be a large group meet somebody at the coffee shop once a week and be like hey we're just going to read scripture out loud and see what god has to say yep and then to speak on um reading scripture out loud also project scripture out over people and that that sounds so weird but ultimately what i'm saying is just talk talk the bible to others like for example if someone is experiencing fear um we have our a couple of our children just experience fear at night and so we decided we were going to teach them scripture for God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And you'll find that to say it is like saying something becomes what you think become, um, when you, when you think it, it becomes what you feel. And it's this projecting thing where you're all like washing it over you. So to, so to say scripture over somebody actually says in Isaiah, the Word of God accomplishes exactly what it's supposed to. It does not return void. Yeah. So anytime you can take an opportunity and to speak Scripture over somebody or a, an, a, a life circumstance you have, do it. It will cause a change in you and your circumstance that will blow your mind. Yeah, it's praying the word of God. Yeah. I mean, and which is one of the most powerful things that we can do as believers. You know, so many people are like, "Well, how do I? I pray for God's will to be done." Well, you, you know His will if you read His word. Mm-hmm. So if you can find Scripture to stand on, like uh, fear or peace or whatever it is that you're in need of, find Scripture mm-hmm. and pray that over yourself. Because then it's essentially just going back and reminding the Father what He's already declared, what He's already promised and and given to you. Yeah. Thank you guys for joining us for episode two of Scripture. And uh, we're, we're so honored to get to do life with you. If, the, if you found this couple videos on Scripture helpful, send them to somebody else that needs it. Yeah. Um, it helps to, to uh, grow and, and to, for us to be able to share the gospel with others. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the, to the channel. We, uh, we appreciate it. It's how we're learning to build a... Uh, Uh, a community of people online who are dedicated and sold out to living like Jesus and we want you to be a part of that and we love you all and we'll catch you next time see you next time